watching Rogers TV. Welcome to Dufferin Life. I'm your host, Tina Avery. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do you know what season gets me really excited? Maple season. Honest to goodness, I am the biggest fan of maple syrup and everything maple. Um, I can't even begin to tell you. So that's what we're going to be talking about this segment. Joining me, Sandy Camplin from Credit Valley Conservation. Thank you so much for joining me. It's nice to be here. It's good to have you back. You've been on the show, but it's been a little it's while. It's been a while, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're coming really close to maple season. Yes. I up and close, yep. Yep. <laughs> and and I, I really wasn't making it up. I really do love everything maple. I've got my maple syrup that stays in the freezer. It's always replenished. And I saw the maple sugar leaves mm -hmm. that they used to make, and or I think they still do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, so let's talk a little bit about what's happening with Credit Valley Conservation and, wh and what we can do during maple season. Great, yes. We are really excited for our 2024 maple season at Terracotta Conservation Area. Uh, the trees are tapped and the sap is already flowing. It's been kind of an early year, so we've got that going. Terracotta is our central location in the Credit Valley watershed, so it's about 30 minutes south of Orangeville, mm -hmm. and we have lots of different maple experiences for everyone to enjoy this year. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm going to start with the one that I have done in the past um, that I totally loved. Um, it's the lamplight. Oh, great! Tell us yes. a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so we do have kind of a big event, but some of our small experiences, uh, small group experiences are one is Lamplight, it's our maple syrup after dark experience, and it is made for um, ages 19 plus, so you'll experience a wagon ride out to our illuminated sugar bush, and once you're there, you'll be able to enjoy a tasting menu of maple themed food and drink live music by the campfire and of course learning more about maple syrup while you're there very kind of relaxed evening it was a lot of fun when i did it we went with a group of people and we just had so much fun and the food was delicious mm -hmm. um, and there were maple flavored drinks i believe yep. and it, it was amazing so it and it it's an experience because I've done it during the day and we're going to talk about what you can do during the day as well. Um, but I've done it during the day, but the night is a totally different mm -hmm. atmosphere, especially with the live music mm -hmm. and, you know, the ability to have, um, I guess, if you're a drinker, an alcoholic drink or a non-alcoholic drink. We have cocktails and mocktails, all maple themed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So do you know what they are this year? We haven't <laughs> fully committed to what they are, but there's usually about three choices. So mm -hmm. you can make a decision while you're there, and then you'll be able to, you know, purchase additional ones. But um, your ones are included with your ticket. Okay. Yeah. And let's talk about that. So people have to buy a ticket. So tell us a little bit about how that works. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, so I mentioned we do have some small group experiences, which we'll get into, I'm sure, and our kind of large family festival. Um, so though the family festival, you can buy tickets in advance online uh, or by phone, and the website for that is cvc.ca mm -hmm. forward slash maple syrup, and you can see all the details there. Um, so you can buy tickets online or in person for our larger event, which we'll get to. And then our small experiences, they are reservation only because they are those small groups. Mm -hmm. So you do have to pre-buy your ticket either online or by phone at the same website. Okay, so let's talk about the big main experience. Yeah, great. <laughs> so that's we're starting out with um, Maple Syrup in the Park. It's our big family experience. Everyone's welcome. That event is happening over six days from March 14th to the 17th and the 23rd and 24th. So there you can expect to um, learn about maple syrup through five different educational stations, enjoy a pancake breakfast, see the blacksmith demonstrations, um, enjoy other family activities and lots of other things. New this year we do have our indigenous traditional helpers on site every day and they'll be teaching through storytelling and song as well so we're really excited to see them. And the event is happening 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m each of those days and I mentioned you can buy tickets ahead of time online or just show up as long as capacity allows. Okay. Additionally for that event we have a special ticket that you can upgrade to a VIP tour and that includes a full buffet breakfast as well as a guide out to the sugar bush and kind of through the event as well so kind of just ends it up to the next level if you want to do that. Oh, well, that and sounds that's for like weekends in March. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun mm -hmm. to, get, to take to just upgrade yourself and then you feel extra special. And you get that <laughs> extra like kind of big breakfast included with it and it's really kind of a fun small group experience yeah okay so uh, the groups for the VIP experience are limited number yes okay yeah. so people should go on and 
upgrade yeah. and do yes. that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Now, is that the sacred fire? Is that the same thing that we were talking about? Yes. Or is that, yeah. Yeah, that's our um, new. So we had an, um, Indigenous partners on other years too. We've just changed up a little bit in terms of what they're offering, and they'll be on site kind of all day, every day, um, teaching. They'll be doing cedar tea um, samples as well to taste that, and they're hosting the kind of station out at our sweat lodge site too, so they can uh, teach a little bit more about what that is, and that's at terracotta like all year long. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize it was there all year long. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, so we have um, different uh, partnerships that we, you know, work with Indigenous folks on to allow them, like, space-making places, so. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. And I, and I think it's really important, too, because, I mean, when we, and I'm not going to get into the, the the, the long and the short of it, mm -hmm. but the short of it is we, we don't have a lot of Indigenous history in our history books that mm -hmm. we have now, so the ability to go and speak with Indigenous mm -hmm. peoples and, you know, just get their experience and, and their stories are phenomenal, they're inspiring, they're always something that you walk away from going, that wasn't that amazing, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's, um, Definitely I think Definitely new perspectives. Yes, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, so when we're talking about, um, maple syrup. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm going to assume this is still part <laughs> of it, but there's, remember we used to sample it and put it on the ice. Yes, and, yes. taffy. Taffy, there yes. we go. Definitely there'll be taffy at all of the events. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and there's different family activities happening the whole time as well? Yep, so that event, like the 9.30 until 5 o'clock, everything's happening all day long, so you can arrive at any time up until we recommend the latest you would arrive is at 4, just you want to give yourself ideally a couple hours to do the event, so earlier is better. Um, there is kind of a busy time of day, maybe 11 to 2, so if you come early or a little bit later in the afternoon is better just to kind of avoid maybe the main rush there if you don't, you know, pre-buy your ticket. Um, but we do have all the events going all day long at that, at that event. And this may sound, for some it may sound like a silly question, but mm -hmm. it's not a silly question. What should people wear when they're coming out? Oh, uh, who knows this year, right? <laughs> uh. I know, we're having the craziest weather. Like, yeah. one day you feel like you can put your sandals on, and the next day you're wrapping yourself in mittens and a, a warm Yeah, scarf. I mean, so dress for the weather, of course. It is an outdoor event. Um, the Pancake House is kind of an enclosed pavilion that's heated, so there you'll be able to eat in comfort, but it is an outdoor event, so do dress to, like, look at the weather that day. Um, we also do on our website have a park advisories page so you can always check what our trail conditions are and what the park is like so if you want to know if you need rubber boots or running shoes or snow boots you can check there at cvc.ca and then just click on the park advisories button okay yeah perfect um so is there i think i read something about sugar bush wagon tours yes. yes so we have two actually additional events that we're hosting this year and so these small group events are happening in april we already talked about the maple syrup after dark mm -hmm. uh, so the next one is the sugar bush wagon rise and this is a new event for us it's for kids it's a fun event that kids can take a wagon ride out to the sugar bush in the late afternoon get out there to that maple forest and kind of enjoy that hour right before sunset where it's really kind of magical and um, make s'mores try taffy try syrup and of course learn about maple syrup and play some games out there as well so just a fun event for kids to kind of just get out there and have fun in the forest that sounds like fun mm -hmm. for sure and definitely dress warm or or not yeah. <laughs> We haven't. We, we won't yeah. be able to figure that out until it gets a little bit closer, and that's happening in April. Yes. 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 Okay. Wonderful. So, let's talk about the importance of the events that you're doing and why they're important to the community to have events like this. Um, you know, maple syrup is something that's become a tradition. It's a Canadian tradition. Um, I think. Uh, in our area and Dufferin and kind of beyond, there's lots of um, people still that don't know a lot about it. Or you, you know, you taste your maple syrup, or you, you know, haven't had the real thing before. So really, to know the tradition behind it, it is a Canadian tradition. We will learn about the, you know, history where we've come from, and we also do some teaching about where we're going with climate change and whatnot as well. So there are some lessons to be learned there. But it is a good opportunity to have some fun in a time of year that's a little bit can be a little bit dreary. We don't have winter, we don't have summer, so it's something we have mud to do. <laughs> <laughs> and we can enjoy that too. Absolutely. Um, but really just like learning that Canadian tradition and it's um, you know new for some people and uh, like it's a piece of people's heritage or it's a tradition for other people to come every year as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I mean, that w I used to always bring the kids and mm -hmm. when they were younger and that sort of thing and now they just go with their friends if they're mm -hmm. gonna go. 
<laughs> they don't want mom anymore. But uh, yeah. it's something that I, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I know it changes up every year yeah. and there's different experiences, mm -hmm. but I think you don't get tired of hearing how it's made or, you know, and, and specifically, as you and mentioned, the climate change. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it tastes divine. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely delicious. Um, but um, I mean, I, when I went, I think it was, was it last year? I can't remember. I think it was last year that I did Lamplight. And we, and we did talk about climate change and how mm -hmm. that's affecting it. So um, is the sap flowing really well this year? Like I know there's, it's different, it doesn't. Yeah, so yeah. really it depends. It's day-to-day um, -day weather. So mm -hmm. for sap to flow, you need temperatures above zero in the daytime and below zero, at least like slightly below zero at night in order for the sap to go up and down the tree. Okay. Um, so when you have the days that are just cold and the nights that are cold, the sap's not moving. If it gets too warm at night as well, the sap's not moving. So we actually have a week coming up that looks ideally if it stays um, really good. We've had tons of sap flowing this week as we just got the taps in this week as well. And we there's lots of sap coming and I've heard um, you know, people were tapping early February this year because we've had wow. that okay. kind of just looking for that specific weather. weather. Yeah. Okay. And how long, like, how long is um, do you tap for? Like, how long does that does the maple syrup run? Um, approximately. Yeah. So yeah. usually, if I don't know what a typical year is anymore, but if we usually it would be kind of like end of February till. Um, maybe getting close to the end of March when things start warming up and you're not getting those colder nights anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, this year it's been up and down. So really, just looking kind of for those weather patterns. And you can people have tapped earlier. You know, they got some sap. It gets cold again. They leave the taps in, and um, once it gets warmer again, the sap will continue to flow. So you just have to monitor it. So in these kind of years where the weather's really wonky, it um, makes it really difficult to plan. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have the time and whatnot and resources to just, you know, watch what's going on, you'll be able to um, get a good amount of sap. So if you're late, that sometimes is the problem. Right. So I don't know if this is a silly question or not, but um, do larger trees make more sap? Like, is it? You can put more more um, tops in a larger tree. So okay. there is, you know, a bit of an equation mm -hmm. um, that shows you how many tops you can put in a tree. So a smaller tree, you would maybe just want one. In like a very large tree, you could maybe put three or so. It just depends on the circumference, like the yeah, circumference of the tree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just figured. I mean, if it's a bigger tree. There's, yeah, there would be more, but I didn't yeah. realize that you could tap them. Yeah, more like more yeah. You don't want to put too much stress on a smaller tree by taking out too much. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's uh, like a ratio of of what you can, or sorry, circumference to put as many taps in as it can handle. Oh, yeah. see, I learned something yeah. new. <laughs> <laughs> I love learning new things. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, and I know that all of these things are discussed when you're taking yeah. the tours as yes. well. So, I, I mean, I think it's such a wonderful event. And you've got family events, and you can go out with your friends and do the lamplight or, you know, and take the kids on the sugar bush wagon ride. There's so many things to do at the Terracotta Conservation um, Area this, this year. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to encourage all of you to do that. So those dates are going to come up at the end of the show uh, for sure. So any last so anything else you wanted to discuss? We've we do actually have one more um, event that was really popular last year. We brought back additional dates and it's called Sap to Syrup. It is a hands-on experience in our sugar shack with an expert learning how to make and bottle and take home your own personalized bottle of maple syrup. So oh. if you want to know the ins and outs, that's your um, that's your event there, and that's happening through weekends in April as well. And it's a couple hours in the sugar shack with our expert, and you get to take home the bottle oh. of syrup that you made that day. Awesome! Thank you so much, Sandy, for joining us. Thanks. Check out that information: cbc.ca/maple-syrup. Um, and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. I'm Detective Graff, this is Detective Bateman. She had access, she had means, she had motive. We need to win. We're doing this my way. Chicago brings out the very best in all of us. Sex, money, betrayal. I feel strongly about so many of these women. You're in the dream now. Canada's got talent a million dollar season!
Welcome back to Dufferin Life. I'm so sad, so glad that you're still with us. And if you're just joining in, you joined in at a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's ha a lot of fun is happening at Theatre Orangeville right now. There's a world premiere, and joining us today we have David Nairn, Artistic Director for Theatre Orangeville, and Jane Spence. You are one of the actors in, in the show that's coming. That's, I am. Yep. It's been so much fun. <laughs> Wonderful. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. It's always great to be here. It's always great to be here in Rogers Land. Well, we're, we're, I have to make the comment first, David, before we start, okay. because you've cut your hair. I have Since the last time you've been here. Since the last time I was here, we... Um, uh, we had a fundraiser mm -hmm. way back, so it's been cut for a while. Yes. Uh, it was back in November, and of course, when, I, when COVID started, I said, I'm not cutting my hair until COVID's over and we have a full house in the theater. And we pretty much got there, you know, we're kind of where it is. So, um, yeah, we arranged it and, and uh, we raised $3,000. Amazing. People, I got 10 people, they each gave me 300 bucks. To, they came up and each had a snip. <laughs> <laughs> and we cut it right there on on the in the center stage, and it was it was, it was so great. Much. It was, but, you know, <laughs> it was but I'll tell you honestly, I, like I've never had my hair that long in my life. Like even in the 1960s, it was never that long. And I, for the last year, I've just been kind of like over it. So I was kind of like I kind of like it now. Yeah. yeah. No, and you look incredibly handsome. Bless your heart. Very <laughs> dapper. Wow, bless your heart. I'm coming dapper. on this yeah. show every week. <laughs> Absolutely. We can. We, well, everyone, everyone who watches the show regularly knows that when you and I are on the show, we just chat and chat and chat and could probably chat for about three more hours yeah for yeah. sure we could do that we could just have a chat show for three hours <laughs> jane you could be a guest yes well, thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right so david i want you to start off by telling me about the world premiere and uh letting me know how everything's going. well i mean it's always a thrill and an honor for us to be able to do a new work right for a playwright to trust us Kristen, of course this is this is the sixth play of hers that we've um, had the pleasure to preview. It's a wonderful, it's a romance, it's, it's a romance, I think is really what it is. You know, we're calling it a romantic comedy. It's, there's some very, very funny moments in it. There's some very heartfelt moments, but it's just, it's a really joyous, just, it's a lovely romance. That's, I don't know, I want you to come and see it. I'm not going to tell you what it's well, all I'm about. Well, gonna, I'm going to come Spoil and Spoil it for everybody <laughs> at home. No, absolutely Jane not. Jane can tell you what she does. Well, and that's... <laughs> Well, I've got David's permission now to ask you, Jane. So <laughs> tell me a little bit about about your role in the play without giving away too much. Okay, um, Tammy is uh, uh, the sister-in-law um, of uh, of. <laughs> okay, we so don't give too much away. I don't want to get too much away, but I, I, well, I guess we better tell them something. So, yeah, so it starts off. Uh, my brother has passed away. He was a writer, and um, his widow is my sister-in-law, and uh, she's she's been a little bit stuck in her grief, and I'm trying to pull her out and help her move forward a little bit, and and I guess I guess what I'd say about this this play is about grief and hope, you mm -hmm. know, and, and finding that hope and that strength to to move forward. And I think that's a while while being a motorcycle mechanic with yeah. with tats, <laughs> so it's really you know it's it's, it's, it's so fun. I get to have tattoos in the show. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> oh my god! roll. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been on stage at Theatre Orangeville many many times. Uh, yes, I've been lucky enough to uh, grace the stage a few times. So I'm going to ask you for the inside scoop about working with David Nairn. Oh. And what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is, it's wonderful actually and um, he's, he's brilliant to have, especially working on a premiere, to kind of mine the script for all the gold in it and, and um, really know where to uh, help the arc of the show. Yeah. And Jane's also a brilliant director. Mm -hmm. She uh, did a, a spectacular production last year. She directed our, our production of the New Canadian Curling Club, which audiences are still raving about. It was a wonderful, wonderful production. It went it on to have a life uh, over with uh, Drayton Entertainment. And so Jane's an amazing director as well. There so, you go, look at yeah. each other, tooting each other's horns. I know, well, you gave us the opportunity. You <laughs> gave us the opportunity, <laughs> Tina. Always, always. You know that I love having you guys on the show. I know, and, I know. Um, love being there. Yeah, absolutely. So it, um, let's talk about, uh, the show's already running, but yes. let's talk about when um, it's, it's done so that we make sure that everyone gets their tickets. It runs till March 24th, but also, um, is that we are still live streaming mm -hmm. shows and we're video capturing them so that if somebody misses them, if somebody can't for whatever reason, 
Uh, and we're also attracting a, like a world audience mm -hmm. are tuning in to watch what's happening at Theater Orangeville. We have regular people who we have reg people who are regularly from BC, and it's really neat on our stage to screen. So people can just go to our website, and we now have I think it's 32 shows. I think this is wow. the 32nd show that we've created or have online now since in the last four years. So that's a really neat thing too. So, but to watch it live stream, you know, like we we had an experience I guess with Cinderella where. Um, they were like somebody was in Alberta, somebody was in or Ontario, and somebody was in the Maritimes family, and they all set, they figured out the time difference, and they all hit play at the same time. So they all watched oh, it so from different corners of the country together at the same time, and then apparently they all got together on Zoom afterwards and talked about the show. So you know, it's really kind of a really neat opportunity as well for people to um, either if they can't get to the show or if they're a snowbird or. Um, you know, if they have family, if they say, hey, you know, we saw this great show, and I know you live in Newfoundland, but go on and you can catch it as well. So um, it's an opportunity for us to really expand our, our, um, our reach with yeah. the show, right? I mean, we want people to come to the theater and, and enjoy it as a live in theater experience, but it's just, it's another kind of it's string to our bow that really came out of the last four years, right? Because we sort of pirouetted into a different sort of, we morphed into a little bit of a different form as well, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so yeah, so that's really a lot of fun too, because it's kind of like here, you know, like we're we're sort of mixing live television at the same time. It's neat. You know what I think is a really great idea about that too is it makes a great gift giving opportunity for people because you can create that experience for them at home and just you know say I know that you know this is for you for Mother's Day or this is for you yeah. for whatever, and then we all get together because not everyone can be together on special occasions as well, right? So I mean, I've got you my should be doing some marketing for us or <laughs> something like that. I don't know. I don't know. So, <laughs> no, I mean, but no, but those are great ideas, right? Yeah. Because I mean, there's still people who are not comfortable going into into some settings, right? Like, mm -hmm. or you know, or compromised health, or you know, we've been having a lot of outreach now with seniors' homes, right? And with groups like that of people that you know aren't so keen to travel, or you know, even in the winter, right, when yeah. the weather's lousy and people go, oh, you know, they they still have an opportunity to see the show, and they can either see it live. Or if that doesn't suit them, they can watch it at two in the afternoon or four in the morning or yeah. whatever time suits them their schedule and their life. Right? They can catch Jane Spence being brilliant with in my this tattoos. Show. With your with tattoos, tats, they can see the tattoos. I want tattoos. <laughs> we can arrange that. We can arrange that. Because these, of course, are not permanent tattoos. So I like to, I'm Jane's, to Jane's committed to her art, but she's also not going to. You know, we're not going to tattoo her permanently. So. So tell me who else is uh, in the, in this wonderful show? Well, we have uh, two new actors. Well, um, yes. It's the first time Mark's ever he been. He was one man. But it was oh, that's right. Stage. Yes, we did Chase the Ace oh, out Mark at the tent Crawford. at Mount Alverno. So mm -hmm. uh, Mark Crawford is in the show. And I mean, everybody is familiar with his work as a playwright. We've mm -hmm. done, I think, five of his shows now. Um, and uh, he's wonderful. It's great to have him in the show. And it's wonderful to, you know. Fantastic actor. I love Mark, yeah. Yeah, and, and Danielle um, Vaskalik, who's with us. It's her first time with us. She's marvelous. She plays the sister-in-law. To I love Jane. Her. She's and fantastic. She's as well. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. She's a playwright. It's really kind of neat because we have a lot of, we have about four playwrights in the room at any given time, right? I'm so, the only one who hasn't written a play yet. <laughs> <get on>. I <laughs> was going to say, and your next project will be. I wrote Cinderella. You know, yes, like I'm, I'm you know, coming like, in the so. dressing room, kind of part of the club. Yeah. But but Jane does a ton of work with new with new work, right? Mm -hmm. And with and works a lot with new playwrights and through a reading series and stuff that she does in the city. So there's a lot of experience in the room when we were rehearsing. And not that anybody's writing the play for Kristen, but you know they, they come from there's different dif disciplines in the mm -hmm. room as well, which is really kind of neat. So it was a super creative environment. Um, Kristen, of course, was with us for a lot of the rehearsal time, and that's always great yes. to have the playwright. I can't imagine not having the playwright in the room when we're doing a new when we're doing a new work because mm -hmm. you know we can kick it around for 20 minutes and go. I wonder what the playwright meant. What did you mean? When, yeah, you know, like you could, yeah and I was actually going to ask you about that process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I mean, when when you're doing a world premiere, you have the the ability to make a lot of tweaks and everything. I would imagine during rehearsal. Yeah, you know, I mean, we didn't. We uh, if you if needed, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because we we did a, a series of workshops, and and it's like you know, if you make one change here, it snowballs into a whole. So sometimes it's just about trying to maintain the through line of sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we weren't rewriting whole scenes or anything like that, no, but no. you know some of the jokes got tightened up, or, or uh, you know if if we suddenly went, well wait a minute, I I said I used to say this, but now I'm saying this, but there's nothing that supports this, right? Right. So it's a lot of that kind of through line, right? And it's always great. Actors are like um, 
canaries in a mine shaft or something, right? If there's, it, it, they, they react so on the moment mm -hmm. that if there's something they trip over 99 times out of 100, it's in the writing because there's, there's like little a bump. It, right. And so you can kind of go, okay, what's this moment? Why is there a bump? Well, it's because we made this change, because we cut this line to this reference, but we didn't realize that we needed something to connect to another part. You know, right. so it's it's very much about the minutia of it, which is really fun. So having Kristen there with you is very advantageous. Because oh, absolutely, she can just because you know we could be, and she's over here in the corner, like you know, <laughs> writing a new line or writing a new joke or you know whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, it's really neat because obviously when you're doing a uh, a play that's established, you're you kind know, of following as it's already been right? vetted. So yeah. been and also to. too is that Jane and Daniela and Mark, you know, they're defining what the what the play will look like, what future productions will look like very much, because people will go, Oh yeah, okay, Mark Crawford. Oh, I, I kinda know then I mean it could be anybody, you can cast anyone, but if you just look at it on the surface, you go, Oh, I see the kind of direction that it went in, right? Mm -hmm. So that that kind of informs and the and the input that the actors are having now is defining what the published script will be. So that very, you know, Jane says, I don't know, uh, why do I say this? And we figure it out. So a million actors from now who are still playing the part won't have to go through that same process. Right. Because Jane Spence figured that out for them, for subsequent productions. You're phenomenal. Right. Well, like, <laughs> it's, it's a real honor to be on the ground floor. <laughs> 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 it's a real honor to be on the ground floor of developing uh, a story like this, to be, to be on the premiere of it, you know. So, yeah. so uh, Jane, tell me, so rehearsals are not long. There's usually a couple weeks. What is the process that you use to kind of embody the character that you're going to be? Well, I, I think every actor, I mean, you're seeing the, the story through your character's perspective, your character's eyes, their particular journey. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and so you, you, you dive in, you fill in all the, the you know, the history and, and uh, you take every clue you can from, from the script as to, as to who this person is. So, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of it is, is written there. To, uh, Kristen's done a beautiful job with the script. She's written some characters you really root for, so. And she usually does. Like, I, I think I've seen quite a few, mm -hmm. I think almost, yeah. I don't know if I've seen all of them, but I've seen quite a few of her plays. And really, you walk out and you just feel like you just know everybody and you have a connection to them, even though you've been there for two hours. Like, you just get that overwhelming feeling. And before I run out of time, I'm going to say you're going to go get your tickets to see this play at www.theaterorangeville.ca or call the box office at 519-942-3423. Because it still runs for it a little is. bit yet. Yeah, people can still see it. Yeah, or absolutely. They can watch it online. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, any last, David, I've got 30 seconds, not even. So oh, man. I've got less than that, so I'm, you know what? I'm not even going to let you talk. Don't even let me talk. <laughs> Don't even let me talk. Let's just sit here and admire Jane. <laughs> All right, well, we'll do that. I want to thank you both so much for coming on the show with me today. Thanks, Thanks so David. much. It's for always a blast. Us. It's always fun. Thank it's you. always a pleasure to have you on, and thank you for joining us. Until next time, bye bye for now. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. Think it's okay to drive high? Think again. Drug impaired driving is as illegal as drunk driving. And in a